Hello guys, it's Johnny Time and welcome to another Web3 and DeFi tutorial. Today we're going to learn about one of the most interesting projects in Web3. And this is an infrastructure project that is going to solve one of the most problematic fundamental issues in Web3 that we have these days. You're probably using Web3, you're using MetaMask, you're using DeFi protocols, marketplaces, NFTs, whatever, and you think that the Web3 world that we are getting into is decentralized, but this is not very true because it's actually controlled by some very big SaaS companies. And in this video, we're gonna understand what are these companies, why it's not truly decentralized, and how this project want and is building and going to solve this kind of problem and if you don't know yet i'm talking about lava network that just came out of stealth recently and i'm super excited if you like this kind of content make sure to subscribe to the channel and smash the like button and without further ado let's get started So this is Lava Network, this is their kind of thesis post where they explain um, everything about the protocol, about the problem that they want to solve. By the way, just I want to say that I'm one of the consultants for Lava Network, I help them because I really, I truly believe in their vision and what they are doing and what they are trying to do and it's an amazing team. This video is not sponsored in any way, I do work for them but I just consult them this is not a sponsored video this is just my humble opinion about the protocol so the problem with web3 these days is that we have a distributed decentralized ledger for example ether okay ether or bitcoin is decentralized distributed ledger that is running in a lot of validators a lot of nodes and no one can change it it's immutable the, the blockchain progress over time and the ledger itself the database is decentralized and immutable but the problem is that well how do we access this data okay how do you access to ethereum blockchain how do you get data about the transactions about the blocks about the volume on uniswap you have to go through a node because you don't have a, the, all the blockchain in your browser. You don't have it in your MetaMask account, in your extension. It doesn't work that way. You, have, you need to have some kind of node. So it's either running your own blockchain node, which is very not good. It's, not, it's very heavy. It consumes a lot of resources and the effort is too much for just getting some data for the blockchain or sending transactions that will be validated and included into the blocks. It doesn't make any sense to run a Ethereum node to send a transaction to send Ether to someone. It just doesn't make sense because it's hundreds of gigabytes of blockchain. You need a lot, a big memory and a lot of like a hardware resources that you don't need you don't it doesn't make sense to get them in order to send transaction or read some data so how it works these days how do we get access to this blockchain is thanks to rpc nodes what are rpc nodes it's basically servers okay like centralized servers yes on amazon aws and google cloud on whatever infrastructure that you can imagine that these servers are running the blockchain itself and they give you access to access the blockchains. They're basically getting requests from your MetaMask wallet, from your dApp that you are browsing, and then they propagate it to the blockchain, or they just get the data from the blockchain and give it back to you. These nodes are basically controlled by some big companies. One of them is Alchemy, then we have Anchor, we have Infura, all these kind of big companies are the main one who most of the Web3 traffic, when you're using MetaMask, by default, you're going through Infura because it's the same company under consensus. And sometimes the main nodes for, uh, I don't know, let's say Avalanche are through Alchemy. So what does it tell us? What does it tell us? It basically tells us that the blockchain itself is decentralized, but the way you connect to the blockchain is centralized because you have to go through these centralized companies 
to these centralized nodes. And the problem is that we made so much energy, effort, as uh, Moxie said over here, so much time and effort going gone into creating trustless di di distributed con consensus mechanism and ledger, but virtually all clients that wish to access it do so by simply trusting the outputs from these two companies without any further verification. When your MetaMask send a transaction to get your wallet balance, it goes to Infura, gets the balance and that's it. It trusts it 100%. There is no verification, no validation, everything goes to Infura and you just blindly trust this kind of centralized provider to give you the right data and the consequences if the data is wrong could be catastrophic and we saw it already happened in the anchor act if you are not familiar with it check out the video in the description below i i basically covered several months ago the hack of the anchor nodes so they hack the polygon and phantom nodes and then they sent phishing messages to users and stole a lot of funds so we w don't want centralized endpoints we don't want centralization and single point of failure and somehow this is the stage where we are right now in web3 and this is quite sad but we are fortunate enough to have some kind of protocol like Lava. Lava is trying to build a decentralized marketplace and network that will connect between clients, consumers who want to get blockchain data, either if it's reading data from blockchain or sending transactions and RPC node. So you can sit in your home, buy a server, run an Ethereum node, and then install some kind of Lava node, for example, and you can provide RPC services for users. Okay, so anyone can do it. It's a marketplace between consumers to providers who provide blockchain access. Which blockchains? Ethereum, Avalanche, Cosmos, Osmosis, doesn't matter. In the more time to come, the more blockchains will be added. And the most important thing with Lava is that it's decentralized, which means that there is consensus, there are rules, there are protocols that enforce and make, sense, make, make sure that the providers are giving good quality for the consumers and the consumers are not lying. Okay, how does it work? With cryptography, with tokenomic incentives, there will be a token probably in the future that will align the incentives between the providers and the consumers and the providers will get tokens to get value for the work that they're giving blockchain access and the consumers would have to pay as we are used to because this is Web3. It's all about moving the trust from centralized entity and putting our trust into the consensus, into the code, into the uh, economic incentives, into the protocol. And that's what Lava is about. It connects providers and consumers and it does all its magic in the center to make sure that everyone is happy. And if one of the providers give you bad access, he will get punished for this. He will get slashed from his Lava coins. He can be replaced with another provider. So you have a lot of providers in different geolocation, different blockchains. That's the beauty of it. It's scalable and it's going to be also performant because you can use multiple providers at the same time. So this is amazing technology, in my opinion, and it's very, very important for the future of Web3, basically to improve and enhance the layers, the, the infrastructure, the fundamentals of Web3. And this is what Lava is trying to do now if you like it if you have any more questions or videos that you want to me to get more deep dive into lava because i'm quite familiar with the protocol please write them in the comment below or if you want to learn more about lava you can definitely check out their uh, main website lavanet.xyz this is the website of course it's backed by a lot of vcs and uh, crypto natives and you can also read the light paper which describes more Technically, not too technically actually, it's quite easy to read, 20 pages, but you can understand how basically, what I explain now is what Lava do, but here you can understand how it does it, how it enforces all these kind of protocols, those kind of tokenomic incentives, how it works behind the scenes. And if you want to be engaged or maybe earn, a, maybe there will be an airdrop in the future, or I don't know because, yeah, I'm in the team, but it will be uh, this basically revealed later but you can feel free to join the discord community where all the updates gonna be it's an amazing community that just started not long time ago already 1.2k members very active people talk to each other about the future of web truth about the future of decentralized infrastructure super super interesting highly recommend you 
to join. So this is Lava Network, this is the problem and how they are planning to solve it. This is just a background intro video. Let me know if you have any more questions about Lava. I'll be more than happy to create more educational tutorials about Lava. And if you enjoyed this video, of course, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next tutorials. Bye-bye.